Hey, what's up everyone? It is Sunday night and we are here at Bat City Comic Professionals to talk to you about all the latest and greatest in indie and small press comics this week. As always, I am your host, Small Press Shan, and I am so excited. This week had like 45 books, I think is what I counted, uh, last I checked, and I was like, this is going to be such an awesome live stream because... I love all of these books, and so we're going to buckle up and strap in because this is going to be a show filled with great books and so many of them that there's going to be a lot to talk about. Uh, but of course, it's wine down your weekend, so we're going to be drinking the wine, and I am drinking Peaks and Tides Cab Sav today, and this is, it's from the Sonoma Valley. It says it's got like layers of blackberry and warm spices. It's supposed to have like oak. Which I know a lot of times like we talk about the different woods in them. And I feel like we haven't had one that had oak in it in a while. So this one's got more of an oak taste. It says it's supposed to pair with lamb chops. Um, I don't have a puppet with me today. So we're just going to pair it with some comic books instead. And um, hopefully you all know who lamb chop is. <laughs> um, but we're going to give this a try and see how it tastes like. That was sweeter than I thought it was going to be. Um, it does say it's like a medium palette, which I definitely think is true because it's not as spicy. Like it says it has the warm spice notes, but it's definitely sweeter than I thought after reading the information. <laughs> what are the other? Blackberry and cherry. There's a lot of blackberry cherry combinations in the wine world these days. And I'm, I'm kind of, I mean, I'm here for it. It's funny because I'm not actually a cherry flavor person. Like, if you give me a cherry flavored anything else, it's not really my favorite. But the way that it blends with the blackberry and assumedly grapes makes makes for a good taste because it, it gives that rich flavor to the wine. This would be very good with food. It would offset food very well. It would be very good with food. I don't have any of that either, but it would definitely be good with some food. Um, I'm going to share this stream so that we can uh, get some buddies in here talking about some great comics with us. If you have anything amazing that you read this week, of course, I want you to put it in the comments and talk about it because I, I read these books. I'm sure some of you read a lot of these books, so talk about them with us. And let's see what everybody was into this week. If you did anything exciting at all and you want to share it, this is the time to do that. Um, and we had a, a lot of really cool things going on. Uh, we continue to have collages uh, being made in Bat City all week long. It is the beginning of summer, so we wanted to kick that off. But we also had comic creation workshops yesterday. And you can see all of our workshop storyboarding that we did and there were some really great ideas yesterday we we got to um build a a portal to a ro world full of robots that uh you could only access through a pizza place which i am like i bet there's a lot of like secret robot societies that start out at restaurants like secret like hidden underground um and we'll find out i guess but this was a really great story made by some of the kids and then um also this week we launched our partnership with the boys and girls club of manatee county and so we'll be doing summer reading programs with them all all summer long but we got to go to every single boys and girls club uh, in the county this week and just get them excited about reading they got to also learn what it means to be a hero and kind of give us some of their ideas on how they could be a hero in our community and then they all do themselves as superheroes or they drew somebody who inspired them which was really amazing to see um, I should have brought them with me I have a bunch of them that they um, they gave us to hang up in the store but there's so many incredible kids in our community who just want to do something to help out and it was awesome to get to talk to all of them um, at the Boys and Girls Club and kind of see uh, what exciting things they've got planned. And speaking of exciting things planned, we will be doing some awesomely cool stuff again this week. Um, Thursday night is is our ladies non-binary nerd night. So if you are in the area at 8 p.m. on Thursday, we will have some snacks and some drinks available to come hang out. This is our adult ladies night. We do have um, our young adults get together time and our kid get together time. This is just for the ladies and non-binary nerds to come and hang out 8 p.m. Um, on Thursday. The other thing is we will be at uh, the Recess Education Juneteenth Reading Conference uh, this weekend. This is or this Friday. It's not on the weekend. It's Friday morning and it is 
fun, free, and amazing for all the young kids who want to come out and celebrate Juneteenth with us and get excited about reading. There is going It's going to start at 8.30 in the morning at the Manatee Central Library, and then it is going to continue at 1.30 um, at 13th Avenue Dream Center, which I've heard um, a lot of people get really excited about just getting to check out the Dream Center. So um, it's going to be great, and we'll have uh, Princess Shuri out with us to come and meet everybody. She will she will be there talk, reading some stories and hanging out and then we're gonna talk um, about being superheroes just like Princess Shuri and how you can help out your community. And that is this Friday at 8.30 in the morning at the Manatee Public Library with the, the Recess Education Organization. Um, and we are super excited to be partnering with them. Um, and seeing of great partnerships, we've got our Bradenton magazines in for the summer season. So if you are looking for awesome things to do in Bradenton. This is a great free resource for you. And in this issue, it even has like what you can do with your dogs for the summer. Um, not like how you could board your dogs, but like places you can take your dog and how to also keep their little feet safe when they're walking on that hot pavement outside. So there's lots of things for humans and pets alike available in here. And of course, We've got our Ascara calendar, and of course, there's a great, wonderful, friendly city flea today. If you miss out on that, there is another one at the end of the month on June 25th. And because it's summertime, they are indoor friendly city fleas, so you don't have to worry about sweating um, and being too warm while you're hanging out and shopping all the local vendors. You will actually be inside. And not only will the friendly city flea be at Ascara on June 25th, but on June 25th, Vintage Vine Market will also have a pop-up sale going in their, uh, in their facility with your honeycomb so you can check out even more vendors there. It's a great time to go uh, just check out all the places in Old Manatee. And not to mention there's just like crazy awesome uh, concerts happening at uh, Ascara all month long and most of them are free which is super cool. Um, and of course if you're looking for something fun and exciting to do during the week you should take your Bat City receipt over to Mysterium Escape Rooms in Sarasota and tell them you just came from there. If you go Monday through Thursday and you show them your Bat City receipt they will give you 20% off your escape room experience. So make sure you tell them we sent you. Um, and then we have the coolest announcement that we could ever make. Um, we are going to be hosting the wonderful, amazing Amy Reader this Sunday, June 18th from 12 to 3. It's a perfect way to like come out and spend your Sunday afternoon. She is the co-creator of Moon Girl. So if you are watching the Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur cartoon, or if you've ever read the Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur books, this is the co-creator of Moon Girl coming out to Bat City to sign. And you can bring your copies of Moon Girl if you'd like, but she's actually going to be signing the new issue of Marvel Voices. And we have the Marvel Voices from the Free Comic Book Day issue, if you don't know what it is. Um, this is just kind of a celebration of diversity and inclusion in comic books is what Marvel Voices is. And the Pride issue is coming out this month, and Amy did the main cover. This is not it. Um, we don't have it, and yet it comes in on Wednesday. So if you are, A, excited to get that Marvel Voices Pride issue, you can pick it up on Wednesday. Or you can come get it on Sunday between 12 and 3, and Amy will sign it for you. You're welcome to pick it up in advance and bring it back. Um, coolest thing about it is that Amy is not charging for signatures. So if you want to come out and get your book signed, you can absolutely do that. It will be, you can get a regular signature or if you'd like to get it CGC witnessed, it will actually be a CGC signature event. So it can be witnessed. So if you have those moon grown devil dinosaurs and you've always wanted Amy to sign it and get it CGC witnessed, this is your time to do that. Um, there is no signature fee for it but there will be of course uh all of the grading fees and everything like that and you can come in and stop by and talk to matt about what those will be um during the week if you'd like i'm so excited it's going to be such an amazing opportunity i'm so stoked to meet amy i love i love moon girl um I, she also worked on amethyst for dc comics which i her her run on that was so good um we do not have copies of her moon girl i'm going to tell you that right now um so if you want one make sure you grab one before you come um but we will have copies of the marvel versus voices pride issue uh for her to sign and i'm super excited this is gonna be great um and then also this weekend on saturday the 17th 
17th, we will actually be at the Braden River Library for their uh, manga fest. They have their anime fest this weekend uh, uh, from 1 to 3 on Saturday. And so we'll be over there hosting some comic creation workshops, but also selling some really cool manga that you can come and check out. Plus, there's going to be tons more of activities. And you should just check out your local public library because... They're amazing, and we absolutely love our Manatee County library system. The librarians are all wonderful people, and they always have the best programming. So come check us out there on Saturday, and then come back on Sunday to the store to meet any reader. So, like I said, there is incredibly crazy amounts of stuff going on. Um, there is also a ton of comics, and should I? I'm going to throw it out there just so you guys start planning. Uh, July 15th, save the date. We are going to be at the Marauders game. We will have a link for you to buy tickets because it will be a uh, Bat City will be the charity of the game that night. So if you buy your tickets through the link that we're going to be sharing with you all soon, um, you can actually benefit Bat City and all of the charity work we're doing by buying a ticket. Plus, you get to come hang out at the Marauders game with us. It's going to be great. Um, I'm super excited. I'm going to move that over. And then uh, we're going to get started talking about some comics as soon as I take another drink. Also, I love that this wine is called Peaks and Tides because I just want to be at the beach. And the moon has been so big recently, so you know all the tides and everything have been humongous. Um, all right. We're going to start it off with the Eisner-nominated Love Everlasting Issue 8 from Image Comics. And, of course, Eisner-nominated Tom King. Um, plus, Eisner-winning Tom King, I guess, if we're going to talk about the past. I don't know if he's actually won for Best Writer yet. Has he? Well, I don't know. This could be the year. Um, Love Everlasting is one of my favorite books on the shelf. This is the story of a woman who wakes up constantly in different romance novel situations. So all of the over-the-top, like the pirates and the um, crazy, like, 60s and all the different, like, weird stories that you get in a romance novel. She keeps waking up in them, and we find out that she just can't find love, and every time she does, and she's happy that she'll end up getting sent to another realm. Like, she dies and wakes up, and suddenly she's in love with some other boy. And it's all orchestrated as far as she knows by this cowboy and in the a couple at the end of the last arc because we're three issues into this new arc two issues into this new arc she found a she found a person who she fell in love with this man and she found out that this time it's gonna stick and now everybody kind of thinks she's crazy because for the last three issues she's been like I can't stay in love I'm gonna die this is gonna be terrible so she's now like kind of stuck in this rut of actually being in love with somebody and she has to accept that maybe something good could happen but the whole time she's kind of losing it at the same time and if you read volume one you know we kind of have a little bit of insight about maybe there's something actually being orchestrated here but now because it's tom king and we're another arc in i actually don't know if maybe i hallucinated all of that and like she's sane and i'm the crazy one uh great story i love the darwin cook style art uh if you're looking for not only like a romance comic that kind of harkens back to those golden age romance comics, but also a good almost murder mystery kind of thing, like a good thriller. Love, Ex Ever Love Everlasting is the great blend of both of those. So check it out. Definitely deserves that nomination that I got for um, best ongoing series this year. Uh, next up, we have Ben Mortara and the Thieves of the Golden Table issue two from Source Point Press. This was one of my books in my live five that I think you should be checking out. And if you haven't, run to your store right now, wherever that may be, and grab it. Especially if you're really excited for the new Indiana Jones movie. And please, if you are, don't spoil anything in the comments because I haven't even seen a trailer for it. Um, but this is the story of a man named Ben who is... Our Indiana Jones, essentially. He is constantly on the go trying to get the next artifact and get to part of different things. And he has been given a map. And this map is supposed to lead them to this leg of this table and all of the magics and possibilities that could come with that. And in classic Indiana Jones adventure style, the first book, we see him go on this quest. He finds the pieces that he needs, and of course, things get stolen. We find different people, new players enter the game. Um, 
And in this particular issue, they have made it to the next place on their list where they think they need to go, and they're not fast enough. Things go, things get wrong really fast, and the more they kind of try to work together, the more they kind of tear each other apart. Uh, it's great. It's, I mean, seriously, fans of Bird and Fraser's The Mummy, Indiana Jones, any adventure story at all, you need to be reading Ben Martara. Uh, we're two issues in. Grab it. I think I think it might only be three issues, too. So um, it's going to be absolutely one of those stories that later on you're like, I heard about this great story and I missed it. Don't miss it. Just grab it now and get excited. It's a great way to get pumped up for summer blockbuster season. Up next, we have a deep, dark issue, too, also from Source Point. I think I just accidentally put all of my Source Point books in a row. Um, this is another one that was also on my live five books you needed to check out this week because it's absolutely crazy. And this is the story of a girl who has heard of this random place called the Deep Dark. And it's inside of a forest somewhere in another country. And she's like, there's weird stuff that happens in there. And we find out a little bit more about how she heard about it in this issue. But in issue one, she goes down there. And of course, like the first person who's like, I know where that is. I can take you. She's like, I'll give you all of my money and wander off into the woods with you. Please just take me to this random place. And so he does. And of course, like monsters attack her and dudes nowhere to be found and not helpful at all. And now she's uh, trapped in this cage and bad things are happening. And... Uh, it's just going to get worse, and they are very clear about the fact that it's going to get worse uh, before it gets better, and I don't want to spoil anything else that happens in this book, so that's all you get, but you definitely need to check it out. If you like those classic horror, like, I oh, we're going to this place to discover something that is, we've heard of this legend, and then the legend is incredibly deadly for them, um, read The Deep Dark. Also, if you're a fan of Karen Gillan from, like, Guardians of the Galaxy or Doctor Who, I'm pretty sure that's the reference model for this, so you can already, like, picture her delivering all the lines in it, because they look exactly the same. Up next, Curse of Cleaver County, issue two from Source Point Press. We did have uh, the little teaser ash can that came out first that was the double feature. Uh, so it's kind of like issue three. But uh, this is issue two of the ongoing of Curse of Cleaver County. And this is the story of a family. It follows a young girl who her and her boyfriend and her friends are trying to go on summer vacation and they're going to go to this place. They're going to go to her parents' house and everything's supposed to be like this big party and all kinds of fun. And when they get there, they find out that something has happened to her brother. And of course, her dad is immediately blaming the brother for all of his wrong decisions. And now these kids, the parents, the mom's like, okay, you've got to get out of the house. You can't stay here. Your dad's going crazy. Like, go find somewhere else to stay. And of course, where did they send them but the cabin in the woods? And they go, and I'm trying to, okay, they go uh, to stay out in this cabin, and in the process of being in this cabin, we kind of learn there's some more secrets to what's going on in life, but we also get all of the classic teen set up uh, for a good classic slasher movie. So we know something's coming, especially if you did read that ash can, you have an idea that there is, like, these dark entities, there's slashers, there's different like demons, all kinds of things that could possibly reside in Cleaver County. We don't necessarily know who we're getting in this one, but based on the cover, we can kind of assume that we might be getting that slasher movie coming soon, and the buildup has been so good for that. Up next, we have Godfell issue four from Vault Comics. This is basically what would happen if a god fell to the planet Earth and people just decided hey there's this massive god on the ground it's holy it's sacred we should live in it and then of course as we know with humans as as one person decides they're going to claim it everybody must decide to claim it and now there's fighting over it but at the same time an actual war has been raging on between different villages and tribes outside of the body of god and one warrior from without the body has decided she's over being a part of other people's wars and she's going to head home and kind of abandons her place in line at the at the front lines and she meets somebody else on the way and she thinks oh this person is pure and innocent and I must protect them and she finds out that they may that that it's 
a pure and innocent person is the only person who can help her along her quest. And so now she's really trying to protect this person. And in this issue, we learn nobody is what they seem. And this world inside this god is more dangerous for everybody who is there than anybody could have possibly imagined. Um, this is a very high fantasy. So if you struggle with high fantasy concepts, and when that actually use high fantasy language, know going in that you are going to get a lot of that. But it is also like a really cool story. And this was one of the issues where I was like, I really just want to follow this other character because now you've given me some background story on a character that I'm really already intrigued with. And now I, I just want to know more and more. And so I love that they're using this as a conversation to dissect humanity in all kinds of different ways and every character has multiple layers that are just kind of hard to get through so it's deep and there's a lot to it um but you're gonna like enjoy peeling back all those pieces okay we are going to head to the lamentation issue to and this is from, this is from Oni Press, yes. Um, this is, it, I love this book because it's 48 pages long and it's a small press book. So you're not, it's not 48 pages, but 32 of them are ads. This is like 48 pages of story. And in this story, in issue one, we were following a girl who was really excited because she finally got her big break as an actress. And she shows up to a gig to audition for a gig. And the second she walks in, they're like, you're perfect, you're amazing. I, I, you've got the part. And she's like, I haven't even auditioned yet. You don't even know my name. And they're like, don't care. And she immediately finds out following that, that there is no way out. The only way out of the building is for them to perform this production that they've been working on. And anybody who tries to leave the building uh, disappears or dies or something. And the world outside doesn't exist for them until they have completed this performance and everything you don't you can't trust anybody and yet you have to trust everybody that you're on stage with and the production has been in process of of getting prepped for the show forever and these people have been there for possibly years and they don't even some of them don't even remember that they are not able to leave at this point anymore and she is the new girl in town so she of course has decided she's going to figure a way out and kind of try to break that spell that's on everybody. And in this issue, that does not go well for anyone. It's really great. It's so creepy. And I'm really excited to see how it wraps up because we are getting to a point where uh, things are really getting bigger and better uh, for every like turn of the page. And so I cannot wait to see what they're going to do as a wrap point for that because I think the next issue is the last one. Um, Astrobots issue two from What Not Publishing. Look, if you didn't go see Transformers Beast Wars, uh, with Rise of the Beast, Transformers Rise of the Beast this week, you should just go. It's a fun summer movie, especially if you are a Transformers fan. Honestly, like you're gonna enjoy it. Um, like classic cartoon Transformers fan. I don't know, like, and if you are a fan of the movies, you'll obviously love it too because you like the Transformers movies. This though, if you didn't get to see the movie or you don't know where you're going to, this is a perfect comic book. For those who are looking for something Transformers-esque, like these characters look so much like them. Um, and the one character, like she's just RC all over. Um, but this is the story of the future of our society. We have been, we put ourselves in cryo freeze in different spaceships when the earth was destroyed. And we left robots in charge of building up a new world for us. And there is a certain robot named Astro who has kind of taken on, he's like, I'm in charge of everything. And he's supposed to be like the Optimus Prime, but I'm thinking he's a little bit more Megatron. Um, and then there is the one robot who is an Apollo unit. And he's like, hey, bad things are happening. Did you know bad things are happening? Like, we need to stop this. Like, we cannot bring humans here. And they're like, yeah, we already knew that. Mm like we're gonna we're gonna have to make sure you don't tell anybody that and so it just becomes this big robot war and they all claim that they're doing what's right to protect humans but like they've already built a society that's supposed to be perfect and utopian and without the humans even arriving yet they're already seeing mass destruction and problems and we've got some really great characters building up because we do have our apollo but we also have um, a venus unit whose name is athena and she's like my like she is actually 
I'm the kind of robot, like, Venus units are made to to just protect humans. And we will always, like, we're like the mother robots. And she's immediately like, I don't trust you. I don't trust you. I don't trust you. I'm going to protect my humans at all costs. And I kind of just want an action figure of her. And I know when we talked about issue one, um, Phil brought this up that there was a new toy line coming soon, possibly from whatnot, or at least there's an ad. And we don't know if it's real or not, or if it's like a fake ad for it. But if they are going to start making toys that match the series, I think that's a great idea because these are really cool robots and I think people would absolutely love to have toys. Also, you should just make toys that go with everything. Um, Maleficent is back as a part of the Disney Villains line from Dynamite. This is issue two of Maleficent. There were some really cool covers for, of course, as usual, Dynamite with their uh, 32 covers for every book minimum. Uh, nails it on so many of them every time but this is if you didn't read issue one maleficent is doing her thing always on her own not bothering anybody like a you know good fairy in the woods and this boy comes and he's like oh i want your power and she's like well you can't have it but i can give you something else like that you want and so she grants him his wish and then dude tries to like come back to her and steal her power anyway from her. And she's like, okay, well, look, I tried to be nice, but if you're going to be a thief and a liar, like, I'm going to curse you. And so issue two picks up with the brother of that kid coming in, and we find out that they are the princes of the world. And she's like, well, I, he's like, have you met my brother? And she's like, oh, was he like this? And she kind of describes him, and she keeps going, like, physically. And he's like, yes, yes, that's him. And she's like, is he also a dirty little thief and a liar? And he's like, I don't think so. And she's like, I do. And so I have met your brother, and I know what happened to him. And he's like, who you have to tell me because I'm the prince. And she's like, I don't care. I'm Maleficent. Um, and then we get a setup for wherever this story is going and how Maleficent will always just um, do what she's got to do to make sure that nobody messes with her. And that's why Melissa is super cool, a uh, fairy villain. And honestly, you know, just invite everybody to your party because that's just cool and don't be rude. Um, but anyway, Melissa, she's super cool. Um, I do this every time because I always love these covers and then it doesn't help y'all at home at all. <laughs> this is Nightwalkers issue four from Source Point Press. Um, this has been majorly delayed for those of us, uh, for half of, like, the comic book industry. And so I'm very glad <coughs> that we finally got it in because I've had a lot of people waiting for it. But this is the story of Saren, who lives in, who is in a uh, therapy home. She's in a group home. She has an addiction she has a, that has developed from her taking anxiety medications and other things and we find out why she has those problems in in this issue and what she's been dealing with but this is all flashback because if you've been following along with Nightwalkers in issue one they found out that all of the therapists and orderlies and everybody from the center had left and they had left all of the people who were patients alone in the center and a vampire type creature broke in and they've been on the run ever since from a horde of monstrous creatures and now Saren is kind of trying to figure out how to battle her own demons and the real life demons that are hunting her down at every turn and it's such a cool thing and we've got some you know, I, I didn't know how far this was going to go, but we just got a little bit more of a cliffhanger for this issue. And we finally also got the backstory on what these monsters and where they came from are in like a little bit. So uh, I wonder if we're going to see more of that because that was like a deep lore that just opened up in like the first three pages of this. And I'm like, ooh, now you've got to go in that direction and give me more of those people and more of their story. Um because I really, it, it was almost like as deep as like the concept of Underworld like shoved into two pages. And I'm like, that was four movies. So you're going to have to give me more than two pages because I, I need to know more. So we'll see where it goes. Um, all right. Up next, we have Zombie Side Day 1, Issue 4, also from Source Point. This is a huge Source Point week this week, which I'm excited about. Um, this is the story of a random group of ragtag survivors in a zombie apocalypse. It's kind of 
held up by this one guy who knew it was coming and he showed up at a diner to save his favorite waitress and was like hey I have a bon- I have a bunker we can go stay in there and she's like well we have to get this person and along their way they've been kind of stopping and picking up people and making their way across across the city to try to get to it and in this particular issue we finally get to the bunker and we figure out what all that is and we kind of figure out that not everybody wants to hold up in a bunker during a zombie apocalypse. And so we see, you know, different people taking different plans and making a different attack. And so, I don't know. I think we're going to find out what happens in day two because I feel like the the first day has kind of definitely come to an end at this point. And so I assume we're going to see day two and see where all the different people have headed out to. But this is more of your zombie land and Shaun of the Dead than it is like your Walking Dead. Like you get a lot of humor. It feels very much like a video game at times because like instead of picking up like the logical weapon, the waitress is like, I'm going to get this chainsaw. And so, and then she's in her waitress outfit like with a chainsaw, like running people down. So it's definitely kind of meant to be more on that zombie humor side of things but if you're a fan of that zombie humor genre which I actually think at this point in life I might even prefer more um this is a great read for that it it fills the void of my Shaun of the Dead uh love that needs to be filled at all times um Blood Tree issue five from Image Comics this is Peter Tomasi's new indie book and this is the opposite of Zombie Side. If Zombie Side is meant to be a comedy, you're probably not going to laugh at all when you read this book. Uh, this is closer to be something that, if you're a fan of Dexter, you might enjoy. This follows a detective who is on an investigation, and the serial killer that he is hunting down is killing people who are connected to murderers and it's basically like if you lie with dogs like you get fleas kind of thing and he's putting them he's like I'm gonna save the world before it's too late and he puts them all in angel wings and has them kill themselves or he kills them and hangs them in different places like angels and in this particular issue while the detective is going in one direction the killer goes in another and has a whole bunch of people just start dropping uh like angels and we have the detective's assistant on one side of town trying to protect a bunch of people who they thought were going to be the next victims only to find out that we have no idea there's there's no stopping this guy it seems like he's kind of all over the place but yet he's meticulously planned it out and we're always like three steps behind him even as a reader like you are only as far ahead as the detective is we don't know anything that he doesn't and so as you're reading the story you're like oh my god like we're making progress and then something happens and you're like i had no idea that we were gonna fail miserably in that and so like we see what happened but we don't see why the setup is and so i love it because we we don't get to put those clues together like this is literally just trailing behind hoping that like maybe you're gonna solve the investigation um very very violent though in in the way those murders happen so uh please keep that in mind i think that already came out um up next we have hell to pay issue five from image comics this is a return of hell to pay kind of went on a little hiatus while charles soul was finishing up eight billion genies which if you didn't read is amazing and you should definitely grab that or start pre-ordering those trades now but hell to pay is the story of a couple specifically in this in this round who work for what is called the shrouded college which this is charles Soule's new big giant university is going to be making out of the shrouded college and the shrouded college is an organization that if you are in need of anything in life They will allow you to come to their college and they will give you all the tools you need to be successful and then they will find a way to put you in debt for the rest of your life. And that debt will just be compounded and compounded and compounded so that you could never actually pay it off. And this couple has been working to pay it off by finding all of the coins that possess, that demons possess that are able to control them. And they thought that in issue one, they on the very like first two pages, they think they find the last coin only to find out that there have been duplicates and there are more coins than anybody ever knew of and the college will not let them go and over the course of the last five issues her husband has been kidnapped 
and his soul is being tortured and damaged and now she is going to make a deal with whatever devil she has to to save her husband before it is too late even at the expense of her whole her own life or a continued debt to the college um really cool really cool story i think charles Sewell has one of the best minds for premises like he just comes up with the craziest ideas and then it's like okay, this is something like maybe you've seen before. What can I do to make that completely different? Um, and I love that his legal brain always comes into it because he is a lawyer. So he always has this like legal jargon that makes the situation so much worse than it needs to be. Um, and it's fantastic. All right, Matt's going to cover his ears for this next one because we have I Hate This Place issue nine from Image Comics. And this is our second volume of I Hate This Place. If you haven't read it yet, um, you can grab trades of the very first volume. This is the story of a couple who one of them inherits a ranch from her aunt. And she they, they go out to live on this ranch. And the problem is once you own this ranch, you cannot escape it. It is filled with ghosts. It is filled with demons. It is filled with giant spiders that call help so that they can get your attention only so they can kill you. Uh, it is a crazy, terrible place. And over the last nine issues they have dealt with anything from humans being bad to monstrous things and now we figured out that uh maybe your family is actually the most dangerous thing in your life sometimes and they are now trying to literally save the world from the end of the world and they have found out that there is much more to this ranch than even they knew about and they are piecing it all together as the story unfolds and I'm not going to go too far because I don't want to spoil anything for any of you who haven't started it yet, but this book is, it's funny, it's got some scary moments, it's got some action moments, it's kind of like the trifecta of, of all the genres coming together, um, and also nominated for an Eisner, wasn't it? It was, uh, best, is it Best Humor? I think it is Best Humor publication, right? Yeah, also nominated for an Eisner this year, so make sure you grab that book while you still can. I just need to do my Eisner show. I've already cast my vote, and so I should do my show now because I can tell you about all the nominees because there's so many good ones. Um, up next, we've got Noctera issue 15 from Image Comics. This is Scott Snyder and Tony S. Daniel working together, and this this is obviously our third volume of Noctera um, because we're on issue 15, so we are definitely like a few trades into this. Um, but it's still really great if you haven't started it, and I want you to, like, go back immediately to it. Uh, but the first two volumes followed the original main character of the story, and as she kind of led us through the fact that the world has gone completely dark, the sun is completely gone, and inside of the darkness, everyone who gets touched by it becomes a monster. And they have worked to create big rigs and things like that that will put light into this world. And people create these colonies of light. And in the very first volume, we learned that there was a man who figured out an equation to bring the sun back and restore the world. And his granddaughter has been helping us along the way to get that. In this volume, we are following M as the younger sibling of our original main character who is telling us their side of the story and kind of leading us through some information that will help us hopefully save the day. Um, but we are seeing that... Twists and turns are always abounding in this book, and we can never really trust anyone, and what's better, light or darkness? You really don't know if anybody that's in the light is better than anybody in the dark, and uh, it's such a great action-adventure story. It's and in that classic Scott Snyder way, where it's like, this is an action story but there's so much step to it so if you are a fan of scott snyder's batman and you like the way he told action but he put in history and lore and family connections all through it this is going to be a great book for somebody who's like i want to step into indie comics but i've only ever read big two and i was a fan of that new 52 batman i feel like this is your great entry point into indie comics from there so Phantom Road, issue four from Image Comics. This is Jeff Lemire's new story. This is the story of a man who drives an 18-wheeler. A lot of 18-wheelers on the road in comics these days. Um, this is a man who drives an 18-wheeler who runs across a woman on the road, and the two of them end up seeing some other weird stuff, and they end up sucked into an alternate dimension-style place. 
And on that alternate plane, they are tasked with delivering something. And they're kind of like, we don't really want to do this. We want to go back home. We find out that they can't go. They can go home, but they can't really because they're required to do this task. There is something with these random truck stops that lead us into this alternate plane. There is all kinds of stuff. There are so many layers to this. And in the last issue, we also met a detective who was investigating um, or an FBI agent, I should say, who's investigating their particular situation. And in this issue, we learn even more about her backstory than she even knows. And so this is definitely starting to open up. Not surprising that we kind of like are a little lost. If you've read Gideon Falls or honestly any Jeff Lemire book, you know those first couple issues kind of put you on the road, but kind of leave you in the... I don't really know where I'm going. I just got in the car and somebody else is driving and here we are on this adventure and I really hope it works out the way I want it to. Um, and then you slowly get handed the map and they're like, oh, by the way, you're the navigator now. And you're like, I don't even know where I am. I don't even know where I'm supposed to be going. It's kind of like reading Jeff Lemire. And so we're at that point now where we're in the car and they've just handed us the map and they're like, all right, you ready to take over leading the way? And you're like, do I know where I'm going? And the details are unfolding as you follow along and you're kind of trying to piece it all together. So if you haven't read a Jeff Lemire book yet, um, I mean, I personally recommend you'd start with May's book because it's beautiful. Uh, but Phantom Road is currently on the shelves and ongoing and a great way to drop into Jeff Lemire. Speaking of writers that you absolutely need to read everything that they ever touch and do, uh, Traveling to Mars, issue six from Ablaze Comics and Mark Russell. And I have stopped for two seconds to point this out because I have never seen anybody do this on, a, on single issue floppy books before. This book is nominated for an Eisner, and this is the first time I've ever seen a floppy comic so on top of it that it has the Eisner nomination seal on the book by the time the next issue came out. So kudos to a blaze for being ready to go, getting that Eisner like seal on there because you usually don't see that until a trade paperback comes out. And also if, because I've said it like six times in the last like four books, if you don't know what the Eisner Awards are, those are the Oscars for comic books. Those are, it's our industry awards. Uh, we pick the best books, the best writer, the best, all of those kinds of things. Um, and we just voted for them and I, I love that this is already there. But if you haven't read Traveling to Mars yet, you absolutely need to pick it up. This is the story of, of a guy who is your lovable loser. And he is like, I've got nothing else to live for. He finds out he also has cancer. And they're like, his doctor's like, we can't do anything for you. There's nothing we can do to uh, heal you. You're going to die. It's incurable. And then he gets an offer from a beef company that's like, hey, whoever gets to Mars first gets to claim it and gets to own it. And, uh, you know, this is America and capitalism. Woohoo, let's go. We want to be first to get there. So we've built this really rickety spaceship and we got you a couple of robots. And, you know, if you're down for it, we'll take care of your family if you're willing to die uh, to go to Mars. One way trip. And he's like, sure, I'll go down a hero. My family gets taken care of. I don't have to worry about the slow, painful death that I would get on Earth. Why not? So he's been on this trip. It's been wonderful and amazing. And he's kind of had a lot of time to think about what he did with the life that he was actually given. And as he's getting closer to his destination in space, he finds out his company is not the only one that sent people. A whole lot of other companies sent some people after him to try to get to Mars first. And they are on his tail and he has to figure out how to get them off of it. Um, because if they get there first, he isn't, his family's not going to get taken care of. And, you know, there's just all kinds of stuff going on. Honestly, you're reading a Mark Russell book. You're, you're learning about yourself. Um, in the same way that Ice Cream Man is like an existential crisis every time. This is like coming off the other side of the existential crisis where you think through all of those things and you're like, oh, okay, this is, this is what I was supposed to get from that existential crisis. Mark Russell gives you, he's like, let's take all those tools and let's have the conversation about it. And Traveling to Mars is yet another one of those beautiful books where we're like, 
I should do something with my life. And thank you, Mark Russell, for helping me figure out not only that I should, but also how I can go about doing that. Also, for those of you who were Deadbox fans from Mark Russell, that book has finally been back on orders. So we will be seeing Deadbox, the rest of that series, coming soon. And I am so excited. I'll probably, let's just assume that the next issue is in my picks of the week whenever it makes it. Um, up next, we have Stoneheart, issue four, from Image Comics and the wonderful Emma Kubert. This is your young adult fantasy novel to the T. This is the story of a girl who is the strongest of the paladins in her world. And she has all of the power but no control over it. So the paladins decide that they need to wipe her memory because it's dangerous to have somebody with that much power and that little control and that little respect for authority. So they wipe her memory and send her to live in this random community. And while she's there, she thinks that she's supposed to be coming there to become an apprentice for like a blacksmith. And she accidentally, unknowing to her, releases some of her power and now the bad guys are after her. And they have sent a man to watch over her and kind of befriend her. And he's like 22, 23, I think he says 23 in this book. And she's like 19 or 20 herself. And they end up like, partnering up together but he ends up of course like there's the betrayal and there's all these things that are going on and in this issue she is trying to figure out how she can save herself save him and uh get away from the bad guy and if, if you've if you like young adult fiction and you're not reading Stoneheart, you're doing yourself a disservice. This is the perfect like YA novel. Uh, and Emma is one of the best at not only telling those stories, but drawing them as well. And she's doing such an amazing, wonderful job with this. This is always one of the first books that I read every month uh, when it comes out. If it's if it's a stone so a stone heart day, I'm so stoked. And I literally like just ran up to Emma Huber at Megacon and was like, I love Stoneheart. I just need you to know that. It's amazing. Keep doing what you're doing and you should be reading it and you should also love it. There you go. That's what I have to say. Um, up next, Survival Issue Two from Dark Horse Comics. This is another vampiric style story you can kind of see the v with the blood on it just give it away but this is about uh this is honestly like if uh red dawn was vampires <laughs> instead of just like another military force come in this is you've got the the family who's been trained their whole lives by the dad to uh, expect that some other military operation is going to come in and steal them. We find out in this issue that something, what happened to their mom that made the dad that way. And so they've been trained to kind of live apart from society and be prepared for something to actually happen to them. And in the first issue that something has happened, they think that it's just people coming for them, but then they learn that those people are more than meets the eye. And now they are kind of trying to fight against these people. And we learn that there's like different levels, uh, much like like a vampire academy or something like that. We're seeing there's kind of like the Strigoi vampires, which are, they call them the Nosferatus in here because they don't talk and they just kind of like attack people. Um, but there's the different levels of different vampires. And so now our main character is, who is a young girl, is kind of, kind of like, okay, well, I guess it's up to me to protect my family. And she's like kind of relying on the things her dad taught her and her dad, but her and her little brother are definitely trying to make it out alive before it is too late. Really, really fun um, vampire kind of story, again, because it feels like Red Dawn. Like I expect somebody to yell Wolverines in the background at some point, and if they don't, I'm going to be thoroughly disappointed. <clears throat> okay, I have to tell you about this again because this is actually really good. We are drinking Peaks and Tides Cab Sab tonight, and it's blackberries and cherries, and it says warm spice notes. I don't really feel like it's that spicy, but uh, it's a balanced palette, and it says nice integration, and I definitely think that that's true because while you have, like, all those different flavors, it kind of blends into one flavor, and you can pick up on little bits and pieces of them as you take that first drink, but then, like... As the drink settles, you don't have like, oh, I just have this. Like, that was too cherry or that was too blackberry. Like, you kind of get a full a full integration of things. So, good choice. Matt picked that one out. He did great. Uh, up next, we have Star Signs, issue two from Image Comics. 
If you are a fan of Wicked and Divine, I think this is a great new book for you. This is the story of a young girl who's like in her, her early 20s and all of the stars in the sky have disappeared in her world. And all the constellations have kind of embodied themselves into different people. And so we're getting this action adventure story of the different signs. And so she is the, the Taurus sign. And she doesn't really know that. She's not really sure what's going on. But she has suddenly discovered that she has the power to freeze time. And she is being chased down by Leo, who is like, I'm here to lead all of you to whatever destination we are supposed to get. And she's kind of like the, the one who's been trained by the government to kind of lead that forever. I don't want to even show that um, because I don't want to show, I don't want to ruin it. Um, but they, uh, the different signs are coming in. So honestly, if you love the zodiac signs, it's just great because you kind of see little bits and pieces of the different personality types. And it's like you're either, they're kind of all exude the worst of their personality types right now. Um, but I, I'm hoping that they're all going to come into, like, the best of their personality types to kind of tell us, like, this is the safety. Like, how we all come to work together is we learn the best of our personality types. But a fun book so far. And what a great way to, like, do a superhero book in a completely new way because it's essentially what it's going to be. And the different ones that we're meeting each time um, are have been really cool. So, um, And we meet quite a few in this one. We meet, like, three two new ones which gives us four of the 12 zodiac signs so um up next we have by the horns a dark earth issue nine and i think this is also technically volume three of by the horns and this is from scout comics dark earth is volume three i think so i think dark earth is volume three i think we had well we had no it might be volume two because we had dark by the horns specifically i don't think there was another subtitled one in there i think it was just by the horns because it's it could have been two volumes for first the first volume, like the first set of By the Horns, but the trade is only one volume, so. Um, right. Dark anyway. Earth is volume two. Got it. Yeah, Dark Earth is volume two. But this is the story of Elodie and her friends who, in volume one, they were, their goal was, her goal was to destroy all of the unicorns in the world because she thought that a unicorn killed her husband. Um, and if you haven't read the story of her and her husband in issue three of By the Horns, just read that. It's so beautiful and it's a silent issue and it'll make you cry. Um, but she went out and she kind of destroyed all dark magic, or at least she thought she did in the first volume. And now there's kind of rumors of new dark magic and new things coming up. And so she is off on a quest to kind of destroy them. And some creatures who have been affected by her who are angry are on their hunt for her to try to hunt her down and kill her and her friends before they can destroy any more magic or dark things in this world. Uh, classic fantasy adventure kind of story, but with really cool bright arts. And um, honestly, like, if you're a video game company, can you, you should probably just make this into a video game because her best friend is this, like, half, like, saber-toothed tiger, half, like, mythical creature, like, mixture and uh, then their other, like this accomplice that has now become a part of their family and one of their best friends is a giant floating eyeball. And it's such a cool, unique concept for all the different characters. And Elodie has like, I really, she has the perfect like Final Fantasy outfit. Like I definitely can see the inspirations where they took that from. But I I love all these characters. And in so far, like Dark Earth and By the Horns have both have like had some really amazing issues that are just complete tear jerkers but then they go back to all of the volume or all the the violence and fighting and uh, attempts to like build out your fantasy universe this universe is so big honestly they could keep this going forever and they'd have so much material to work with griffin galaxy's most wanted issue three from whatnot's massive publishing line um this is the story of griffin who is a super crass captain in uh, originally in the world that was like controlled by the government and she has since stepped out of that and we first meet her in prison and another prisoner is like hey my world is being destroyed if i break you out or i guess she's a, pr a fake guard she's not a prisoner she was a fake guard and she's like if i break you out of here can you help me save my my people 
And uh, in issue one, that is kind of the adventure that they're focused on. And at the end of issue one, they decide that they should be a team. And now they're going against the the government and they're trying to take it all down because a fascist government shouldn't be in charge of anything. And Griffin is like, I don't know what's wrong with your planets and your earth and your rule, but like, I don't know why you keep letting fascists rule things. And so she is like, I'm going to take them all down myself. And at the same time, she's very like, kind of like, like I said, she's very crass in and of herself. And in this time, in this issue, we find out that the backstory of Griffin is not anything that you would expect it have to have been. Uh, the world that we know and the characters that we know have all been a lie. And we're told that on the very first page that everything that you have been told by Griffin so far, not true. And I love that. I love the unreliable lead character. Like she's not necessarily, they're not necessarily the narrator. Uh, they're kind of just a, a, they're the secondary character. We're kind of seeing the story uh, omniscient, like third person for the most part. But they are just absolutely uh, a mess. And I love them being like, no, I've been I've been lying to you. Here's the actual story. We're also going to move the story forward at the same time. Um, I'm just, I, at the same time, I, I all I said I stood for, I still stand for that. But, like, not for the reasons you thought. So... All right, we've got some books ending this week. Ooh, ooh, I don't know where to start. Okay, we're going to start there. Um, Dahlia in the Dark, issue six, is ending. And I think this might be... No, this is not. Um, I don't think it's the Chris Sheehan cover. No. Um, no, it's not. So anyway, Dahlia in the Dark is ending this week. And this is the story of a guy who... Oh, it's Mad Cape Comics. Sorry, I'm so sorry. This is issue six. And... This is the story of a guy who used to be one of those mobster henchmen and he was really good at his job and then slowly but surely he started to be really bad at it and of course we find out that it's because he has a daughter and he wants to be better for her but he can't because he's a not a good person and he gets one last job opportunity and it's to deliver a certain package and in issue one he finds out that what's in the package is actually a fairy princess from another realm and He's like, I, I can save her in a way that I could never save anybody, like my daughter or my wife or any of the people in my family. And so he's put himself kind of in harm's way over and over again to save her and try to stop a war that is brewing from her kidnapping. And in this issue, we do kind of accelerate things really quickly. She goes back to her home. He takes her there and they kind of fight with all of her allies to stop her father from taking over. And it's it's a, like the battle like really comes to a head really quickly in this story. And we're going to see where he falls and how he wants to, you know, align himself for the future. It's really great. It's not... It, while it is fairy tale, like it is a fairy world, and there is that, we it actually leans more on that like reluctant mob member and the guy who wants to get out of it, and who's made all the bad decisions. It leans more on that than it does the fairy tale creatures. So if you're like I'm not really into fantasy characters, they almost don't even come into play. Like you get like two pages in every book where they're like, by the way, remember they're fairies. And here's, like, what the fairy realm is up to right now. And then it kind of goes back to just this adventure story, this buddy cop almost story of the two of them trying to figure out how to stop all these people. Uh, Almighty, issue five from Image Comics. I would imagine that this is, I know that this is just the end of, like, a first volume. Maybe? No, I'm not going to say I know. I feel like this should be the end of a first volume, mostly because I just love these characters so much. Um, but this could actually be the end of the whole thing. And this is the story, honestly, of two people. And it really focuses a lot on Thale, who is our woman who is trying to save someone else. And she's been hired to bring a person home. And she's going to do that. And in the very first couple of chapters, or first, first couple issues, she is determined to get us out of the attacks of different people who are coming after us and in around issue three we ended up in what is called zone one and zone one is monstrous literally 
Um, it's kind of like if you stepped out of the real world and into the um, I am legend world where suddenly nothing is there, but then there's all these creatures who kind of hover around different places. And Phil's like, I'm going to get you through this. And guess what? Like, we know that's not necessarily the case. Things do not go the way we've been told that they were going to go this whole time. And you don't expect that because this is kind of like I said, this maybe is the end. I'm putting a question mark on that. But you're like, oh, this is the end. So everything's going to be happy and wonderful and perfect. And it's like, no, every page that you go through, like, something bad happens that leads us further away from this like wrapped up perfect story that we're gonna get so honestly if you're like i'm tired of perfectly cheesy like wrapped up bow on top that last that whole last issue is just closing closing off uh holes in the story this one is like hey we're gonna do the opposite of that and every hole in the story we're gonna punch further through it we're gonna like america chavez into like other dimensions punch through what you think is about to happen so almighty great story uh up next ambassadors issue six from image comics and this is the end of volume one which i'm very happy to say because i thought it was gonna be the end of the whole thing so this is a story of a woman who is the smartest woman on the entire planet. And her husband frames her and she ends up in prison for all of the bad things he did. And while she's in prison, she comes up with a way to create superpowers and super people. And she offers them to everybody in the world, but only will she choose the best people. And the best people, meaning not the richest and not necessarily the smartest and not necessarily the most capable, but the people who are actually doing what they can for others, whether they have the means to do that or not. And so far, each of the issues have kind of introduced us to different heroes and, and kind of given them each a chance to go on a mission. And this is the first time that they've all teamed up together and even her and they have to stop a tidal wave that is going to destroy an entire world uh, an entire country and while they're doing that they find out that there is a, a league of bad guys that was created by her ex-husband who is determined to take her down and he's got all of the richest most powerful people in the world on his team and he's given them all of the powers in the world and now we get this epic showdown battle and uh this is the essential lead-in to the big Mark Millar event that is happening this summer, which is called Big Game, which is going to be, um, I'm going to open this up, a combination of every Mark Millar book ever. And none of those books necessarily go together in my brain. And so I'm really, really curious to see how Big Game is going to work because I, I'm not really sure how he's going to put them all together. But I'm also really, really intrigued. And I'm going to I'm gonna be honest. I wasn't a Mark Millar fan. Outside of Kick-Ass, I did not really care about any of the Mark Millar books. Um, and, and, and that was, like, the only one I kind of really ever, like, took the time to, like, keep going with. Like, most of them I wasn't really a fan of. And I did, like, Kingsman, the movie, though. But I never read the book, I will be honest. And after reading all of the books that he's been re really like, he's recently released, um, Ambassadors, Nemesis Reloaded, Nightclub, I'm, I'm like, 100% ready for this event. I'm, like, okay, maybe I need to, like, I need to investigate this. Like, we've taken all this, like, 90s energy that a lot of the Mark Millar books had, and he's put some of that modern emotion and depth into it that I'm like all right let's bring it all together and see how this works because I don't know how you're going to bring this universe into one place but I am intrigued to see how it happens and so big game launches this summer if you are a Mark Millar fan you're going to want to get it um if you have been reading the new books or if you're a fan of the old books they're all coming together it doesn't make sense to me either but it's going to happen and we're going to see what happens when it does <laughs> Um, also ending this week for volume one is Back to Fairytale Yet. It says issue six of six. 
there has to be another volume. This is from Invader Comics, and this is my first time getting to the end of, uh, of an arc with Invader. So I hope this means we're going to get a trade, but we're not going to have to wait forever for volume two because I am kind of obsessed with this book. <laughs> um, this is perfect if you are a fan of I Hate Fairyland and you kind of wish that, like, the entire, like, Pevensey family, like, was in, in I Hate Fairyland because this is about five kids who were best friends when they were younger and they all found an imaginary world together or what they thought was an imaginary world and they would go and play in this world and one day one of the boys stupidly came back and told his family about it so all of them were separated and now we fast forward we're all adults none of them have ever spoken to each other again and a a squirrel comes back from fairytelia with a fairy and says hey by the way the whole entire world is being destroyed. The only people who can save it is y'all because you're kind of like the kings and queens of Narnia. You have to come back and use your powers to save our world. And of course they're like, no, we have lives. Like one of them's like, I'm literally the president of the United States. Like I cannot, I cannot go to your fake fantasy world. And they're like, it's not fake. It's apparently real. We have to go back and save it. And everything that we've done through the last six issues um, may or may not have been for not because we get to the end of this and there has to be another volume. And I'm so stoked if there is. This is one of my favorite, uh, favorite random books on the shelf that we don't talk about uh, enough in this world. Back to Fairytale, yeah, like, has such a cool universe that it's developed. It's such funny characters. Um, it's, seriously, if you're a fan of anything like Kyle Starks is writing, if you're a fan of anything that Scotty Young has done with I Hate Fairyland, this is another book that you definitely need to be picking up. So grab it, check it out. Six issues in. I assume we're gonna get a trade because it does say it's six of six for this volume. We'll see. I don't know when that comes, but I hope it comes soon. If not, grab all the issues because it's so good. Um, Breath of Shadows, issue five from IDW. This is the story of a rock star who has a drug addiction. And he is trying to figure out how he wants to stop it. He doesn't want to be addicted to drugs anymore. He wants to be the person that everybody in his band wants him to be. He wants to uh, perform and make music and do cool things. And his, his uh, manager tells him, oh, I heard of this place in this book. I heard, I know you've been reading the, like, let me give you the book. You read it. Like, let's go to this place. It's, you know, one of those lost tribes in uh, the South America. Let's go down there and let's figure out how to get you un, unaddicted to drugs. And um, that does not go well. <laughs> we have a group of people who are researchers who are like, we're going to go and we're going to research this and figure it all out we have a group of people who are like our job is to, like they're basically mercenaries going through here and they all kind of team up the band shows up and the whole band's like well i gotta protect my investment in this band and five issues in we learn um that the bugs that we thought we were imagining maybe more than we thought they were there may still be a part of our imagination i don't know uh, some of the time I'm sitting there and I'm looking at them and I'm like, am I hallucinating these bugs? Are these bugs there? What part of this is real and what isn't? Like, who's actually on a drug trip and who isn't on a drug trip in this book? And uh, literally, this is another one of those like, oh, when people come into a place that's not theirs and they don't respect the culture, horror movie happens. And uh, this is great for that. You should check it out. If you like those kind of horrors, you're definitely going to love it. And it's crazy. And uh, again, IDW Originals. There has yet to be an IDW Original book in the last year since they've started this Originals imprint that I have not been like, this is the book that you should be reading. So IDW Originals, where you need to start if you are looking for some, some great titles. That is a great publisher. Um, line from IDW. Like, that's a great new world from IDW to kind of start looking into. We've got some books kicking off this week. A return. Uh, we have Fence Redemption number one from Boom Box, which is the uh, teen imprint from, from Boom. And this is the return of Fence, which if you are a fan of uh, the manga or the anime uh, Yuri on Ice, this is your, this is your next 
book. You need to grab Thins Volume 1, or you can kind of start right here because it does a really good job of setting up a new story. And this is the story of a team of fencers who are all high school kids, I believe. And they are in a they're in competition fencing world and some of them are really dedicated to it and some of them are really not dedicated to it. We learn that there's a lot of different um, experiences for the different people. We learn a lot about fencing in this book. I now feel like I know more about the rules of fencing than I ever have in my entire life after reading this this one issue. But this sets up our rivalry. So manga fans, you know, like one of the biggest categories of manga and anime is the sports like you know, manga, anime world, and all of the coupling that comes out of that and all of the people who have problems with each other and all of the drama of competition. This is that for you. If you are a manga fan and you're like, I really want to try an American comic and I don't know which one, it's yes. Fence. It's a hundred percent Fence. It is. It, it is just. It is a Japanese manga that reads uh, American style, honestly and truthfully. So, if you didn't read Volume One, Volume One is actually one of Boom's best-selling books ever. So, um, happy to order a Volume One for you if you need it. But. It's a great place to jump in for manga fans to American comics. Up next, this is like a PTSD situation for me to talk about this, but we've got Katrina's Cavern, or Katrina's Caravan, sorry, issue one from Scout and their Chispa line, which is their new Latinx line. And uh, Katrina's Caravan is a group of circus people, essentially, um, who it's like a caravan of weird folk stories and stuff and they are traveling around different places and they are this is going to be a horror anthology essentially of a crazy creepy stories from Latinx culture and this particular one is the story of literally my nightmare La Chisa. Um, and I like even saying that on the live stream, I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to cry now. No, this is literally the thing I was most afraid of as a child. This is the story of, a, in this particular book, we are following a boy and his dad who are trying to get across the border and there are some terrible people who try to stop them. And while they are trying to do that, a, they start to hear the sound of an owl and the story comes to the point where we start to talk about La Chisa, who is a huge part of Mexican folklore, who is a woman who is a giant owl with the face of a woman who will basically kill you no matter what side of the world you're on. And this so this kid and his dad are trying to get away from these people and La Chisa is stalking all of them and they don't know uh, who she is after. And Katrina caravan is telling us the story so we are seeing them kind of perform this story in that uh circus sideshow like freak show kind of thing um and then we see how the story plays out and we see how katrina handles her audience um yes um it is a you can't stand your oh sorry am i covering a uh, la la chisa I'm um, sorry, I didn't forget where the title actually falls on there. Um, this is great. It's it's so great for that we have this story coming out. You know, all week long I was like, oh my gosh, this is this is one of like the most like terrifying like Latinx like cultures. I was raised in a family of a, a Latinx family, and you know, one of the, this was a story that like my entire community, everybody like we talked about this all the time. This was when we would tell stories, uh, scary stories at night. This was the story that we were all afraid of. Like my friend's parents would just constantly like use this as the way to keep us inside at night when we wanted to go outside and play um, in the dark. And I would tell people this all week and they're like, oh, I've only ever heard of the, the Chupacabra. And I'm like, oh my gosh, Chupacabra's not even scary. Like that's not even a that's almost not even a horror story. Like, I would hug a chupacabra if it meant I didn't have to face any of the other stories from uh, the culture, that, like the Mexican culture and the Latinx culture that I learned as a child. And this was, like, the top. So I love that they started with this because I'm like, everybody, this this is your horror story. Um, and, again, this is, I think, book two from the Chispa line. So congratulations to 
Um, the, the Chispa creators, uh, which I believe is David Bowles, is I believe the person who's in charge of the Chispa, who uh, I know from working at Book People in Austin, he was always coming out and, and, and doing great and wonderful things with Book People in Austin. So it's super cool to see David go from writing novels and kids books to overseeing this kids uh this uh latinx imprint for scout comics which i'm super excited to see so congratulations um up next we have franklin and ghost number one from source point press i told you it was a huge source point week and this is written by the same person who does good boy garrett gunn so if which who also did Cleve, curse of cleaver county by the way but franklin and ghost they uh this is the story of of a alien who lands on earth and kind of takes the form of a fox very quickly and he is like hey i'm this crass fox uh honestly if you read good boy this is very much in the same line of good boy but this he's like hilarious immediately like attacks these people who are trying to attack him and like takes their car and is like oh i'm gonna go on my adventures i'm gonna do all this stuff and I've got to find uh, my buddy, who I'm supposed to be partnered with, the other alien who was supposed to come down here with me. And he follows where the light is towards his other alien friend. And that alien landed in a cemetery. So the only options he has to embody are dead people. And so he becomes ghost because he is embodying the skull of a dead person. And they talk about human bodies and all of the things. And so it kind of sets up the fact that we're going to be going on a lot of adventures. There's going to be a, a fun little buddy cop story happening here. And uh, with a ragtag group of people, like we're going to see this ghost and this, this fox and this skull go on some adventures. Again, if you're a fan of Good Boy, this is going to be like your next book from Garrett that you're going to want to go to because it's going to be a comedy the whole time. Um... And you're still you're gonna get action and comedy mixed together um, in that classic buddy cop sense. What's on the cover? Like, is that another character? I don't know. This Excuse character me? doesn't exist yet. Okay. So okay. I'm not really sure if this character is coming soon. But yeah, there's actually like no female character in this book at all. So I'm not sure who it is. But it definitely gives me a uh, Paula Abdul like two steps forward, two steps back, yeah. like opposites track. That's the name of the song. Definitely gives me that kind of vibe with the fox and the girl. Um, and knowing Garrett, that's probably what he was going for because he loved your 80s, 90s pop culture references. So I'm like, I feel like that's what he was going for when he like made that suggestion and we'll probably get that at some point because that is another person who was probably born in the 80s. Um, I think he's like the same age as you, maybe me. And so all of his references and all of his jokes, I'm always like, that's this. I see where you're going with that. And he's like, yeah, yeah, it is. Um, so it's hilarious. It's funny. Uh, you're going to, if you enjoy the, if you enjoy a good boy, if you, enjoy, if you didn't read good boy, you should read good boy, by the way, it's John Wick, but it's reverse. The dog is anthropomorphic and trying to go after the people who kill its human. Um, but if also, if you just really want like a good buddy cop story, that is absolutely absurd, but well-written, check it out. All right, another one Matt will close his ears for. We have Archie and Friends Hot Summer Movies. This is a one-shot, and it is going to star Riverdale Jones and the Burger of Density. Um, I love that it calls him a hero burgerologist, which I would like to petition that we could start calling Matt a burgerologist. Um, if you know my husband, you know that burgers are his, like, it's like, me, the cat, comics, burgers. And those are fluctuating on the time of day and the day of the week, honestly. Um, and I'm okay with that because cheeseburgers are amazing. Um, but this is one of your Archie Summer, Archie Summer classic. You know, we get a different season. Every season gets a different Archie one shot. And this starts out with the story of Riverdale Jones, who is going to get the burger of density and he has heard of this great burger and he is fighting against someone who is also trying to get the burger and i don't want to tell you who then we get the story of king koala because if we're gonna have some great summer blockbusters you gotta have king kong in there and archie 
And Mr. Lodge and Veronica go to an island and they meet King Koala. And of course, Hiram is trying to figure out how he can use King Koala to make him money. And you get your classic King, King Kong story told in two parts, actually. They had to break it up because there was so much story that it didn't fit in just one digest style story. And then I think there is one more. Yes, and it is E.T. And uh, an alien comes to town and Archie and Jughead meet him and they're like, hey, we've got to E.T. this situation and become friends with this this alien. And of course, it's Archie. So all of the pop culture references are there and all of the different like jokes and hijinks and possibilities you can do. Um, of course, most of the stories in these are usually classics from throughout time. You always get the one new story, which of this one is the Burger of Density. So if you are excited for Indiana Jones, like we are, which I said at the beginning, uh, and you're an Archie fan, this is the perfect book for you. Um, up next, we have In Hell We Fight, issue one from Image Comics. This is an all-new book, obviously, because we're in the number one section, but this is the story of some kids who all live in hell. And issue one starts with them kind of we get to know each character and then we kind of go on an adventure with them uh we meet our very first character who is xander who hates frogs so now that he is dead and in hell of course all of his worst experiences come from frogs but each person um in their hell form has a certain kind of power and it's a terrible one so uh xander's is that he can throw up the things that are needed so he has to, whenever they need something, they make him throw up and then uh, there it is, the item that they need. In this, the, the three main kids are actually trying to get some ice cream from an ice cream truck and a young demon spawn is like, I can help you. And so they all set up an adventure to where they can get this ice cream truck to stop and they will steal the ice cream from it. And once they get the ice cream truck arrives and they get it to stop as they intend, we find out this ice cream truck does not have ice cream in it. And um, what it does has, have in it is gonna lead us on a really crazy adventure with these four characters. This is um, your classic like Stand By Me, Goonies, any of those things where kids team up, except it all takes place in hell. So you've got some weird powers, you've got some weird characters. Um, you know, blend those things, blend Hellboy with the Goonies, and you're gonna get in Hell We Trust or in Hell We Fight. Um, it's it's gonna be a lot of fun. This feels like a summer blockbuster in comic book form. Uh, I think you should definitely check it out if you didn't grab that issue one. And our last issue one before we get to picks of the week is Sudden Death issue one from Scout Comics. This is a non-stop, so we're only gonna get this issue before it's gonna go on to a full graphic novel. And this is one of those that honestly, like the art, like the, I have a, a love affair with comics that are all monotone. Um, I don't know what it is, but I think there's this really cool thing about comics being put in blue tones and things like that. And so this is, um, one of those kind of looks like Blue Book does right now um, with that uh, really cool Michael Oming art. But this is the story of a guy who has some really bad choices that he makes in life. And um, he's like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to meet this girl in a bar. I'm going to I'm going to take her home. All these things are going to work out really well. And nothing at all works out for this guy ever. And. I can't even tell you how this issue ends because it's a giant spoiler for the trade, but this is definitely setting up, um, I, it's not even at the end, okay, it's in the middle. Um, this is definitely setting up that this guy has something special about him. And the thing is, is that like we don't know why, we don't know what, well we know what I guess uh, by the end of the issue, but something major happens to him I'm going to go back towards the beginning of the issue so I don't spoil anything else with what I show. Some major things happen to him, and we are going to see, this is going to set up a really, really big story. Um, possibly people who have sudden weird powers, possibly people who can cheat death, possibly people who die at random. Uh, 
it's all over the place like with who has what and where it is and we've got some some female characters in here who are definitely like kind of on the investigation side of things but this guy is your I want to do right I want to figure out my life and the second he tries to figure that out and the closer he gets to it the like suddenly like bad things happen and and then maybe something good in return i don't know this is one of those non-stops where i'm like if you grab this issue and then turn around and order the trade like or just order the trade right now because this was one of those that it's gonna go from that issue one to a trade and i cannot wait and also i'm so glad that it is because i want to know everything that's gonna happen immediately because this character I was like, oh, he's got a terrible life. And then I was like, oh, now we're going in this direction. And then I was like, oh my God, I don't want to wait for anything else to happen. I just want to know right now. So I'm glad that once that trade paperback comes out, I won't have that problem. But also, check it out. Grab this issue one, see if it's for you. Um, and if you're like me, and that monotone art gets you every time, you're going to love it. But also, like, if you haven't, checked out the story this is actually a really well done story before we get to the week i'm going to take another drink and this is peaks and tides it's a cab sab it's from the sonoma valley we were talking about it earlier it's got blackberry cherry oak but it's a medium palette is like their whole thing and i think that's and it and it's all about integration i think that's totally true because like i can't tell taste of the oak at all and um, it doesn't have that dirt taste to it it doesn't really overwhelmingly blackberry or overwhelmingly cherry so they definitely did a great job of integrating all the flavors and i'm gonna pour a little bit more before i keep going so i don't have to stop and pick the week if i decide to get some more all right and now Picks of the Week. There's a million of them. Half of the books I already told you about, let's just pretend they were in Picks of the Week too. But as always, Hairball is in my Picks of the Week. This is issue three from Dark Horse Comics. If you shop here, I'm ordering more of issue one because we're out of issue one and because everybody loves this book and you should. Um, if you're a fan of Junji Ito's style manga horror, this is also a great jump into American comics. But also, if you're really good, if you're a fan of really good horror, you absolutely need to read this. This is the story of a young girl who uh, is adopted, and the couple that adopts her immediately starts fighting. And they're like, "Oh, well, we never fought before. We adopted this girl, so it must be this girl's fault." And she kind of relies on her pet cat that she finds off the street to help her out and so she's like oh i have my bestie and bestie will keep me safe and bestie's like i absolutely will keep you safe kiddo by uh possibly like attacking maybe even killing if necessary all of the people in your life who hurt you and after the first couple issues best uh our main character has been forced to go live with her aunt because of circumstances that have happened and now in this issue she's kind of like i have to get rid of bestie it's for the best for all of us if I get rid of Bestie. And you know what? Bestie ain't gonna ain't gonna play that game. Um, and things get darker and darker and darker and darker. And I want to hug this cat, but also I want this cat nowhere near me at the same time. And this is all told from the point of view of this young girl talking to a therapist. So I love that it's like her in a room and she's telling us the story. And it kind of flashes back to what happened. Oh, it's so good. Seriously, if you're a fan of any good horror movie of any kind ever and you're not reading Hairball, what are you doing with your life? Go read Hairball. It's so good. Um, fantastic. And we'll have more copies of Issue 1 soon because I know Matt hasn't read it and I'm just going to keep rubbing it in. Oh, that's why I haven't read it. Yeah, because we don't have an Issue 1. And because I work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, jobs. Yeah, everybody has one. This is a thing that people do, but read if you're going to read a comic, Hairball is definitely one of the ones to grab. So, um, also, one of those books that has made it into the Pixel Week a lot for me is Junk Rabbit, and this is issue three from Image Comics. This is the story of our world where we overwhelm overwhelmed it with all of the waste that we throw away, which is crazy, and 
in this world, we decided that we needed to, like, rich people just left the planet. They are, like, living out in space in luxury, uh, allegedly. And then, like, middle class and above are now living in these dome cities that they built, which we get the whole backstory of in this issue. And then anybody below that is living amongst the trash. And we found out over the last two issues that there has been a kind of superhero s type person, a vigilante, if you would, known as Junk Rabbit, who is fighting for everybody and has been for so long, like a church has a, like risen that fought, like is like worshiping at Junk Rabbit's feet. And Junk Rabbit has returned in our first issue and is is here to help us out. And don't worry, return, I say return, I don't mean there was an original volume. Like this is just like, oh, Junk Rabbit's back in this world. Apparently they existed before. But we're following a set of siblings and one of the siblings' boyfriends who live in the world of this junk and they are trying to A, figure out who Junk Rabbit is, but also B, keep their family safe and move forward. And in this issue, we're following this, the boyfriend who has returned home to his mother who is a drug addict. And in that conversation, we are actually able to learn a lot about the past and what this world is and the reason this is in the pick of the week is because the way they built out this world so well in this issue like issue one did such a great job with exposition i thought we knew everything we were going to get out of this world and then now issue three was like hey guess what there's like four more layers to that and they're all going to come to you through this woman who's basically having like a drug hallucination and an, an investigator who's trying to figure out like why rich people are redacting all the information for them and on this social network that we all live on and which is way more invasive than anything like we've ever seen in our time period. So and we're all still trying to figure out who Junk Rabbit is, and we're at that point where like we're like Spider Man memeing, like pointing to each other. And one of the siblings says she knows who Junk Rabbit is, and she's about to expose them all to keep herself safe and kind of move into the city because she thinks it's going to happen for her. Uh, great story, so many layers, great commentary on how we're terrible to people. And how we could uh, all help each other if we wanted to. So, jump, grab it, grab it. It's fantastic. Uh, up next, once upon a time at the end of the world. This is issue six. It is the start of the new arc of this book, and um, it's Jason Aaron and Lila Del Duca on this uh, this this arc so far. And I mean, it's just an Aaron story, but I'm super excited. This is this is the, like I said, the book to the rise and fall of Gol Golganuza cannot even say that um it's okay just call it once upon a time at the end of the world which is already a long title um but this is the story of mezzi and uh Masio and i'm i'm gonna try to find the first half of the book i can't show you um oh let's see. okay so they met when they were kids in volume one in a wasteland and everything has been destroyed in this world and mezzi is a ranger and the rangers all believe that they were preparing for what happened when the world came to an end and now the world has and Mezzi thought she had to be on her own and now they're in she met Masio in the beginning and he is like hey like the opposite of her he's not doesn't seem like he's prepared for anything and yet at the same time he is um actually a great inventor and so the two of them work together to kind of stop the rangers in volume one and then they end up going on this great adventure together across the wasteland to try to find what has what Mezzi once learned about, which was the Oasis, which was a place that was prepared for the Rangers to eventually come and take over, but none of them know where it is. And this book fast forwards to when Mezzi and Mezio are older, and after years and years of traveling together, they have fallen in love. And that's kind of why I can't show you the first half of the book, which is a shame I can't show you because it's actually really, really beautiful because their whole thing is the world is terrible and awful and look at how destroyed it is, but we are together and we are beautiful and our love is beautiful and like we're gonna show that to this terrible world everywhere we go. And literally the first half of this book is the whole reason that this issue is in my picks of the week because it's so gorgeous of a love story for the two of them to be like, 
I like they they're constantly like everywhere they go like one of them is like marry me in this place and and then they just like have this beautiful moment together in it um it's it's so good but again that first half is definitely um adults in the art style and some of the conversation but I love I love them as a duo in volume one we saw what the future looks like so we're kind of working our way to that future um but the fact that we had this beautiful moment in issue six was so good. Um, and then I promised you during the live five that this was going to be a pick of the week and we were going to be talking about it in much more detail on the live stream. This is Puck the Artist issue one uh, from Scout Comics. The subtitle is And the Myth of Color. If you uh, are looking for it, Puck the Artist and the Myth of Color is the full long title. Uh, this is also a nonstop and this is listed as a teen book. I definitely think that it is going to be one of those that's like every age range is probably going to fall in love with it. Um, so once again, nonstop meaning we're going to get one issue and then we're going to move to a trade paperback. And this is the story of Puck. And in this world, when you draw something, it can actually come to life. And so at the very beginning, Puck is talking to a mouse that he drew, and they're talking about all of the things that he needs to work on and how he's watching the inn for his uncle, who he lives with because his parents are gone. And they live in this black and white world, and Puck's friends are like, hey, we're going to go out to the forest and draw some trees and hang out. Like, you should come hang out with us. He's like, I can't. I have to watch the inn for my uncle like I told him I would. And while they're watching the inn and – of course falling asleep and doing none of the things that he said he would um he gets notification that something bad has happened and that these ravagers essentially have come for his friends out in the forest and puck is like i don't know what to do and the the mouse is like grab your best weapon and of course there are paintbrushes and pencils and puck's like you know there's that secret thing from my dad and they decide like yes i should go for the secret thing and I don't even, I, I think I already told you on the live vibe what it was, um, but he, he goes for that magical secret thing from his dad and he opens it up and the entire world changes and that happens in the last couple pages that are going to lead us to that, but it is, you know, all about that opening up to yourself and your world and the beautiful adventure that it's going to go on. Like, this is definitely your coming of age story, but it's also much like, any of those books where we're going to see it done through art and color and inspiration and all of these characters you know you have each one of them you already know who they all are you've got the girl who's like no we will stand and fight whatever you've got the friend who's like maybe we're just here to do our job and you've got the one like puck who's like i really want to believe that there's magic in this world and that maybe i could be a part of it but i've never really had anything to give the world and i don't know that i deserve to be the one to do that and we're gonna see that come all together um I, I this is one of those beautiful stories where i was like i i'm gonna put this in the hands of so many people and we're gonna talk about this in so many different ways and and the power of not only like that that color as use of a storytelling mechanism um but just that inspiration moment where we discover something new to ourselves in this world and how impactful that is you know think about the first time that you experience something that really changed your outlook on the world and that you weren't even expecting to experience something that you were like I'm going to go through this world and I'm going to do my best at all times and then suddenly have an experience that you're like I have so much more to give and I didn't even know that and now I'm giving it and this book nails all of that it's so it's such a wonderful magical book and I cannot wait for that non-stop trade to come in this was definitely for me the second I read it I was like halfway through the book and was like, this is the pick of the week. And I don't even know if it was halfway. I might have been like three pages in and was like, based on the title and what we're talking about, I, I already know this is going to be my pick of the week. And then I got to the end and I was like, God, this was not wrong. This is, it's beautiful. And I absolutely adore it. And I cannot wait 
to read the rest of the story and I'm so glad it's a non-stop and I can read it all at one time. So if you're like me and you're terribly impatient, uh, a lot of times this is one of those books that you're not gonna have to wait. Uh, but I definitely recommend grabbing that issue one and checking it out immediately because at least you're gonna get to see if it's something that does have that inspiration level for you. I'm gonna take a drink. And then we're gonna talk about what else is in stock this week. So Fantastic Four issue eight is out. I'm gonna crack this just a little bit so you can see that this is a wrap around cover with once again, a billion and one characters have been a part of Fantastic Four. So this is such a cool cover. This is the second one they've done. They did it for issue seven as well. So cool. Um, also out this week is Red Goblin issue five. We've got the new sh the uh, new talent showcase. So DC has used to have a new talent showcase that had run back like all the way to like what the eighties was it that old? What how old was the new talent showcase? The the uh, showcase yeah, books. 80s, the, yeah, the the eighties early nineties. They kind of stopped that a couple years ago, and then they just recently brought it back. But they've brought it back as a partnership with Milestone Comics, which DC recently fully incorporated. And they have uh, now made it into a program to find uh, marginalized voices, both in writing and art. And this is the new talent showcase that focuses on that, which I am super stoked about. Thank you, DC, for bringing us 12 stories from voices we have not heard yet. Shazam is back with issue two. This is part of your Dawn of DC, and I know a lot of Shazam fans who are really happy with that so far in those two issues. Bishop War College issue five. I believe this is the wrap-up of this Bishop story. Star Trek Defiant issue four. There's also Star Trek, uh, the one with the, the, the puppies, the dog book of Star Trek and I totally forgot to grab that and bring that out here. Um, Invincible Iron Man issue 7 with this really cool Riri cover. We need more Riri in our world. Uh, Dark Knights of Steel issue 11 of 12. We are slowly pulling towards the end of this and if you are not reading this you should be. This is uh, Game of Thrones in the DC universe so if you um, enjoy that in any capacity it's so well done, and it's it's just an awesome story. Um, Walking Dead Deluxe issue 64. We are reprinting all of The Walking Dead in color. Great way to get The Walking Dead if you never got it before. Uh, Money Shot issue 2. This is the Money Shot Comes Again. I love this uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths uh, homage cover that they did. We've got the Joker Who Stopped Laughing issue 9. And we've got Batman 136. We've got group number two. I have people all the time ask me, are there any more group books? Are there any more group books? Guess what? Groot's got his own title again. Check it out. Uh, the Joker Uncovered issue one, which actually is reprinting that variant cover of Robin on the Joker's lap baby crying Santa that everybody wished they had gotten during Christmas time. It is now the main cover of that. Uh, Peacemaker tries hard issue two. If you're a fan of the Peacemaker show, this is a continuation kind of moment for that, for those fans. He even looks like John Cena. Loki is getting his own book starting with this issue. This is issue one. Getting us uh, hyped, I'm sure, for a new season of Loki. Uh, Poison Ivy issue 13, the continuation. We have pushed this twice now. This is the, we're entering into 13. Originally, we were only supposed to get six issues and it moved to 12. Now we're at 13 of this Poison Ivy series from G. Willow Wilson. And uh, she's crushing it. It's so good. I mean, I'll read anything G. Willow Wilson writes, but this is great. Uh, the Flash has hit issue 800. And we've got this awesome Michael Cho cover. But also just a great way to celebrate uh, 800 issues of The Flash. Adventures of Superman, John Kent, issue four. We are flying through this Dawn of DC. And of course, that is partially because we are going to take a slight break on it when we hit Night Terrors in a couple of weeks. So they want to get you really far into your Dawn of DC. So you're prepped and ready to go for a little break. Uh, speaking of the Dawn of DC, Steelworks, this is issue one. Steel is back in the DC universe. And I think it is written by, yes, this is written by Michael Dorn, who uh, 
was the voice of steel but has also been in other uh, sci-fi things I Spider-Man issue nine. This is that Dan Slott Spider-Man. This is not your amazing Spider-Man. This is the other Spider-Man run where like Spider-Boy recently appeared and things like that. This is issue nine of that series. Uh, Sana Staros Star Wars issue four out this week. There was a uh, quite a few Star Wars books. The Empire came out this week. Uh, the Empire one shot. I think Yoda was out this week, and I think Darth Vader. There's a lot of Star Wars books were sold out on most of them. Um, X Men, Immortal X Men, issue twelve out this week, and this is your Pride variant. We are going to start seeing a lot of X Men because there's a new little mini event coming out with some more Days of Future Past kind of stories and different things like that. Uh, but also the Hellfire Gala is about to happen. So if you are looking for Hellfire Gala variants, they're going to be stretching across your your Marvel comic universe over the next couple months as we start to get towards that. And if you are an X Men fan, you know the Hellfire Gala is where everything changes every year so get prepped uh this is x-men uh, mutant first strike this is part of the before the fall which is the big event that is coming this uh is that one shot for mutant first strike that's going to lead into all of the things that are coming in this event and then x-men issue 23 and one of our corner box variants from mark brooks launching that a uh, 60 year anniversary celebration of x-men I cannot, I, I mean, I can believe it because you know, obviously I wasn't alive when it happened, but 60 years of Avengers and X-Men both happening this year, which is super cool. Um, oh, Matt brought me this. I'm going to grab this really fast. We, I mentioned the issue seven of Fantastic Four. We actually have a graded one that has the Fantastic Four label on it, which is super cool. This is a 9-8. Um, and same thing as that issue eight. This is a wraparound cover with a bunch of the really cool characters from Fantastic Four. Um, I actually saw these covers at Comics Pro. This is one of the things they told us about uh, was these cool covers and we were all like, who's gonna get blocked by the barcode? And they did a really good job of making sure that nobody got blocked by the barcode in the end because we were all really worried about that. But super cool, you can get a graded copy of it. Uh, let's see if I can reach this, okay. I was trying really hard not to have to get up to reach that. We've got some trades in stock, one of them being Once Upon a Time at the End of the World, Volume 1. So if you're like, hey, that book sounded really cool and I'm glad it was one of your picks of the week, Shannon, but I didn't read Volume 1, guess what? It's out now, so you can. Um, and it's a beautiful story. I think at least one or two of the issues from Volume 1 made it into picks of the week. I'm going to save that for a second. One of the things I have been asked about the most over the last couple of years is, Shannon, if I want to get into Tom Taylor's Nightwing, how can I do that? And I'm like, you can't because we're sold out of the issues and the hardcover is sold out. And I don't know what to tell you. Guess what? It's finally in trade paperback. So finally, if you've been waiting to get into Tom Taylor's Nightwing and you want to go back to when that started, here it is. You can do that. Finally in trade paperback form, six-time Eisner-nominated series Nightwing from Tom Taylor. Here is where you start. Grab your copy today. We also have The Hood, the saga of Parker Robbins. This is The Hood number one through six, plus Dark Reign, The Hood one through five, and material from Dark Reign, The, Ca the Cabal. I know The Hood was a character that we've been seeing a lot of buzz about maybe being featured in some movies and different things like that. Now's your chance to actually figure out who The Hood is. Um, one of my favorite books of last year, uh, this year, actually, wasn't even last year, I don't think. I think it started, maybe started in December, but recent uh is chroma this is the beautiful story of a world where we believe that everything needed to be black and white we had to like ash out food and people and all things because if color was involved then people would die and bad things would happen and of course we learned that's not exactly true uh very much the giver kind of story and that uh, awakening moment I love these like mixed pages of black and white and color. It's so it's such a beautiful story. Four issues, all oversized, gorgeous. Everybody should read it. It's so good. Um, we also had Mark to Death, Year of the Rat come out from Bliss on Tap Publishing. This is volume one, and this is the story of a man 
whose uh, wife dies, and when he goes to figure out like what happened and how he's killed, how she was killed, he finds out that there is a set of mobsters who drained his wife's life to extend their own life and get her time. So it's kind of like a, um, you know, if you suck the life out of somebody, you can take their time and have additional years, and he now has to fight that. Um, Oh my god, I'm so excited to tell you this is here. Wonder Woman, Historia, the whole thing, all three issues of that beautiful prestige format book and in prestige format size, even as a hardcover. Look at how much bigger that is than a trade paperback. Um, this is one of the most beautiful books you will ever, ever read. It gives us a, a full history of how the Amazons were created. Um, leading up to like Themyscira and all of that, you're going to get all of your Greek gods. This, seriously, uh, it was nominated for an Eisner for Best Art. I believe it won. Phil Jimenez might have won for Volume 1 or Issue 1 of this. Um, Kelly Sue DeConnick wrote this. This is one of the best books of of the last year so fantastically done i i cried we don't even talk about big two books on this show but i brought issue three of this out on the show and was like this is a pick of the week and you can't uh, issue one and two were also picks of the week You're like you can't stop me because uh, a it's my show and b it was the most beautiful book and so incredibly done um so inspiring as like the story itself like it's just so inspiring i wanted to go out and like save the world and like be a good person just from reading this book but just to look at like they have a little bit i'm like i kind of want to open it this is wrapped i always open at least one of our hard covers in the store so i'm i might just i might just do that right now you know what you're gonna watch me do it because you need to see what this book looks like and i don't have issue one so i can't show anybody issue one so you know what this will be the copy that I open because look at this. Look at, at this. This is a thing that happened. Uh, Phil Jimenez was like, hey, I, I like to make art and I'm going to do that at, all over the place in this book. And there is a reason why issue one was nominated. It's gorgeous. I'm going to show you uh, if I can find really quickly the urn page because... I this is this is an art flex right here. Every single one of these urns has a different scene painted on it. Uh, good God, was this extraordinary! The fact that there's that many Grecian urns and they all have art on them, they all tell stories. If you actually look through them, all of the stories are even relevant to what we're seeing. This is phenomenal. And again, Kelly wrote an amazing story, but the the caliber of art that Phil Jimenez and Gene Ha and Nicholas Scott brought to this story on top of that was just extraordinary. And then you add in uh, the variant covers that like people like Becky Cloonan did. And this was just, hey, let's make the, let's make one of the best big two prestige format books that's ever been made. And let's do it all in three issues and just show off at how cool we are. So thank you for letting me open this. Um, also, if you ever want to know how your uh, Amazons were formed, this is this is now the only canonized version that I will accept on how the Amazons came to be. Um, and then back in stock this week, we're going to talk about books that make me cry and that I love. We have Canto Volume 1 back in stock. Yay! Um, I love Canto. We I recently learned that uh, Canto will be on a little bit of a hiatus because it is switching publishers. But uh, David Boer and Drew Zucker created this fantastic story about a, a group of tiny knights who all run um, on a clockwork since and their hearts were stolen by a sorcerer. And one of them is given a name and the name is Canto because he loves to tell stories. And Canto says since he has a name and it's his job to go back and get their actual hearts so that they no longer run out of time with the clockwork ones. And he goes to save the day and this is the beginning of his adventure. And um, Drew, J David, Buck David Boer said he was a big fan of The Wizard of Oz and classic fairy tales and that concept of putting a little bit of hope within a world that seems dark. And he does such a beautiful job of doing that in this story. Um, I've never, like, 
cried or cheered or laughed or had as many reactions as I do with Canto. This is absolutely like if you came in and asked me to name my top five favorite comic books of all time, we all, like, I think most people, if you've talked to anybody in Austin, they're going to tell you flat out uh, from any of the Austin Bat fam will tell you Canto is definitely the top favorite book of Shannon of all time. And um, if you ask me to name top five comic books of all time, this is going to be for sure in that. Um, I think everybody should read it in the entire world. It's so wonderful. They even say it's part fantasy, part adventure, all heart. Um, it is. It is so good. Um, I cannot recommend a book more in this world that, like, in this particular world and in everything that's going on and in all the things that we are dealing with in, in our lives. I cannot recommend a book to you more than Canto. And um, I honestly, I started with volume two and then I, I went back and read volume one and I was like, this is just like, this is just it. This is what, this is what storytelling was meant to do. It's meant to be inspiring. It's meant to be fun. It's meant to be beautiful. You know, Drew Zucker's art is so good. It pulls you in, but David tells you a story that goes above and beyond what you would expect. Um, read Canto. Read it. Love it. Um, and build a bear. Make plushies. I'm going to keep saying that for the rest of my life. They literally want a heart. That's the whole point is they want a heart and a name, which is kind of your whole thing at build a bear. So give me Canto plushies. Give them to me. I want them. I will give you all of my money. I don't have any money, but I'd give you all of it if I did. Um, read Canto. It's my favorite book. Um, so... We have a lot of really cool things, like I said, going on this week at Bat City. I'm going to rehash uh, some of them really fast for you. Uh, this Thursday night is Ladies and Non-Binary Nerd Night. It starts at 8 p.m. It runs until you leave. I'm not going to lie. There's snacks. There's drinks. There's fun, uh, amazing conversation. I can't wait to see you all. Um, this Friday... At 8.30 in the morning, so maybe don't stay until 2 o'clock in the morning for nerd night, um, but 8.30 in the morning this Friday, we will be participating in Recess Education's uh, amazing Juneteenth reading conference. We will have Princess Shuri out there to meet you. She will be reading some stories. We will be talking about how to be a hero for your community and how to make the world a better place. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Please come support this organization. They are doing amazing work to help young people um, from marginalized voices get the the opportunities that they they deserve um, and the books that they need um, please go support them um, and then we will have Amy Reader out on the 18th which is this Sunday coming up here at the store you just need to show up here she will be here from 12 to 3 she will be signing copies of the new Marvel Voices Pride cover that she did um, it is a free signature. We will also have a CGC witness on site if you want to get that book CGC witnessed and graded. She is also the co-creator of Moon Girl if you missed the beginning of this live stream. So she will be able to sign your Moon Girl copies if you have them. She also, depending on how busy of a day it is, may be doing sketches. So come out here and be excited about that. I just once again want to send a shout out to all of our old manatee neighbors for the great day that they provided us today. Uh, we had the Friendly City Flea. We had Vintage Vines pop-up tea party. I got the coolest thing ever, and I want to make sure I give a shout out to my new buddies um, who made me this bracelet. My sticker is falling. I don't want to, like, ruin it. Hang on. They made, I went to the Vintage Vine dressed as Alice in Wonderland because they were having an Alice in Wonderland tea party, and two of my new buddies... We're sitting there. They were selling their art and their bracelets. Kid creators, who I love. And I got this really cool bracelet to match my Alice in Wonderland outfit. It's blue and white like Alice's dress. And it has a butterfly. Um, they said in honor of the caterpillar who turns into a butterfly. I said it was in honor of the bread and butterflies. Uh, but then it also has a little cat on the back in honor of um, the Cheshire cat or Dinah. 
who I think it looks like Dinah, if you know your Alice in Wonderland lore. But I absolutely love to support kid creators, and thank you to, A, their parents for letting them have their own booth. They were right in the middle with their bracelets and their art, and it was super great. Um, but also just thank you to Vintage Vine for providing that space for those kiddo creators to also be included in the pop-up market today. I love that. Um, make sure you support all of the wonderful businesses in Old Manatee. They're always doing great things. The next Friendly City Fleet is on the 25th at the end of the month. Vintage Vine will also have a pop-up that day. Um, and Sugun Vita will be open to also have some really cool thrifting needs. And of course, we will be open that day because we're open on Sundays. We'll have some cool crafts. I will tell you sneak peek of July for Shark Week. We're going to have some Reading is Jawsome activities happening. Super stoked. Um, we'll be out at the Braden River Library this Saturday for their uh, anime con with some manga and some comic creation workshops. And then next Saturday is our Story Spill and Curse event. So all of those kid readers, make sure you come out for our free experience of diving deep into reading, get a new free comic, and have some fun with us. And until then, uh, we will see you on Wednesday for New Comic Book Day. If we don't see you then, we'll definitely see you on Sunday for Amy Reader in the store. I'm so stoked. Thank you so much, Amy, for coming out. We are so proud to have you. And uh, if we don't see you for all of those things, and even if we do, we'll definitely see you next Sunday night at 9 as we wind down your weekend with some great new Indian small press comics. Happy reading, everyone. We'll see you next week.